What up all my fight fans, UFC 300 is just around the corner. As a matter of fact, it is this Saturday, April 13th. I cannot wait. I've already broken down the early prelims. I've already broken down the prelims. Now, what I'm about to do is break down the main card for you. I'm about to break down all the fights from top to bottom. If you haven't checked out the early prelims or the prelims videos, Please go check them out. Let me know what you think about them. Let me know who you got going on to these fights. Who do you think is going to win? How are they going to win? Just let me know all in the comments, guys. But right now, let's talk about that main card, shall we? We got the rising, up upcoming star. The big mega star, I guess, if you will, in the middleweight division. The star in the making in the middleweight division, Bo Nickel. Taking on, I believe his name is Cody Bund Bundridge. Um, sorry if I'm butchering that name, but at the end of the day... Let's face facts, guys. This is not a very competitive fight, to say the least. I believe they're bringing this guy in to really make um, Bo Nickel look good. Um, and I know there was a lot of, uh, how would you say it, controversy or a little bit of upset individuals regarding Cody, or excuse me, um, Bo Nickel in the main card. I'm actually, I'm not upset, but I do feel that this the what we have here ufc 300 i just don't see that being a main card attraction i could see that being on the undercard i could definitely see that being in the prelims definitely not the early prelims but the prelims itself i could see that you know there's quite a few great fights in those early in those prelims even in the early prelims that i would much rather see in the main card that's just my personal thing. I don't have any grudge against it. I have no bad feelings against it. I, You know, at the end of the day, it's still cool. I'm still going to watch it. But I don't feel necessarily... If this was, a, you know, as a matter of fact, if this was an actual, just a regular UFC um, pay-per-view, not UFC 3, uh, 300, then maybe I'll say, okay, cool. But the fact that it's UFC 300 and you want it stacked from top to bottom... You know, with great fights, this is not necessarily a great fight. This is more of a fight for one fighter to look good. Now, I'm not saying Cody cannot do anything. You know, hey, everyone has a puncher's chance. Let's face facts. Everybody can have a chance to knock somebody out, possibly catch them in a submission. We all know this. But at the end of the day, on paper, really, realistically, Bo Nickel should be able to win this with ease. And let's all face facts. That's pretty much what's going to happen. No disrespect to his opponent. Moving on, we got a very, very fun fight. I am very, actually very much looking forward to this fight. Um, we got Charles Oliveira taking on Armand Sarukian. These two guys are actually coming up um, great victories over Benil Dariush. This is pretty much for the number one contendership, I would say, for Islam Makachev's belt. You know, you got some really great, great fighters in this. You got Charles Oliveira, former champion of the world. You got um, Armand Sarukian, who is definitely doing his best to get that rematch. In the earlier day, in his earlier day fight with Islam Makachev, those two have fought each other back in the earlier days of in their UFC career, in the start of their UFC career, and um, it went to a decision where Islam did get the victory. But a lot of people felt like you know Armin Sarukian did very very well against Islam, and Armin would love to get this victory over Charles Oliveira and show a uh, possibly get an uh, being a, a challenger for Islam and show that hey things are much more different now, but they are different for Islam as well. And at the, on the other side of the cage, you got Charles Oliveira, who lost his belt to Islam Makachev and wants that shot to regain that belt, regain that strap, regain his, um, his championship glory and becoming lightweight champion of the world again. You know, Charles Oliveira, we all know this guy. This guy at one point was a quitter. He was, he was at the bottom of the barrel. You know, he was going up and down from featherweight to lightweight. And then somehow he was able to go on to this crazy one run and become champion of the world. So you definitely do not want to sleep on Charles Oliveira. <coughs> Excuse me. Charles Oliveira on this fight. You know, I have Charles Oliveira. I'm a very, very big fan of Charles Oliveira. No disrespect to Armin Sarukian. Armin Sarukian has been in there with some tough challengers, but has not been nowhere near the level of Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira, you name him, he's fought him in the current status of the lightweight championship, the lightweight division of the world. You got Michael Chandler. You got Justin Gaethje. You got Justin Poirier. You even got Tony Ferguson. You got um, you got even some of his earlier fights where he went against Max Holloway and all these other great contenders out there. Yeah, he did he lose some? Absolutely. But he won some and he won and he became champion of the world for sure. It's going to be a very fun, fun, fun fight, guys. These guys have great wrestling. They have great takedown. We already know um, 
Charles Oliveira with his um, record of having the most submissions in the UFC. You know, it's it's going to be a very fun fight, guys. I got Charles Oliveira winning this fight. Hopefully, we see a really great fight between these two guys. Now, the biggest, big, or not, excuse me, the biggest, but the baddest fight on this card is the fight for the BMF belt. Got the one and only, the, you know, the king of violence, the, the must-see TV. I mean, God, this guy, these, you know, I can't say enough. I can't compliment these guys enough regarding their fighting styles, regarding their nicknames, regarding of the history that they have made regarding their fights. You know, you got the all-action Justin Gaethje taking on Max Holloway for the BMF strap. I mean, I know I've been hearing some, you know, people talk about this fight, how Max Holloway might be, you know, in over his head regarding this fight, how he might not be able to you know, hold off Justin Gaethje with his power and such, but at the end of the day, you cannot sleep on Max Holloway's toughness. Max Holloway is just one tough SOB. You definitely do not want to sleep on him whatsoever. Now, Justin Gaethje, he looks like he's been new, new and improved. You know, he was able to get a rematch victory over Dustin Poirier back in July 29th. Excuse me, back in July, um, and he was able to get a knockout victory. You know, something that doesn't import, nobody's ever done to Dustin Poirier really in that case where he got head knocked out. You know, he, he's he been, I'm sure, he, you know, he's been dropped before. We remember Conor McGregor, but being knocked out the way he was like Justin Gaethje did was very impressive. You know, Justin Gaethje continues to learn. Justin Gaethje continues to grow. And he is a force to be reckoned with in the lightweight division. We got Max Holloway, former featherweight king of the world, former featherweight champion of the world at one point. And now making his second time debut in the lightweight division. We remember his first time when he went against Dustin Poirier for that um, interim championship of the world strap. It did not go his way. But now, who knows? Maybe this time we might see a different Max Holloway. A different, a more prepared Max Holloway where, you know, he has allowed himself to, you know, put some size on in order to compete with these bigger guys. Because, hey, let's face facts. These guys are much bigger in this division. And you, you know... Max Holloway isn't necessarily known for his punchy power. Max Holloway isn't known for his one-stop power. Um, he's definitely known for um, piecing you up. Definitely known for 10, 15, um, 20 combos where he's just nonstop throwing at you. Death by a thousand cuts type of fighting that Max Holloway does. So it's going to be a war, guys. This this thing's going to be bloody. This thing, These guys are going to trade shots after shots after shots. I am hoping this goes all five rounds because I just do not want this fight to end whatsoever. But we got to pick a winner. Where I, well, I personally feel like Justin Gaethje is actually going to get this one. Only due to the fact that Justin Gaethje does have size. Justin Gaethje has been fighting bigger opponents. Justin Gaethje has the experience in this division. And I feel Max Holloway, it just... The amount of time he, um, he's been in this division or the amount of time that you know he's preparing to fight in this division is just not long enough. I feel like he needs to take like at least a year off where he can actually develop some skills, develop some muscle, develop some gains where he's able to compete with these guys in the lightweight division. But, hey, no, if I would not be surprised if Max Holloway somehow gets this done. Now, you got yourself the 